Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Vessalatu vesselamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una ve anfa'na bima 'allamtana ve zidna ilmen nafi'a. Allahumma arinal hakka hakkan ve arzukna ittiba'a. Ve arinal batıla batılan ve arzukna ictinabe. Rabbi şirah li sadri ve yassir li emri. Bahlul uqdeten min lisani yafqahu kavli. Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bediüzzaman Said Nursi podcast series. This is Mustafa Tuna. You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. A rough translation of the text we will be reflecting upon, inshallah, will be posted at this website too. Just go to podcasts, then words, then the 11th word, and scroll down to the relevant episode. We will continue reading the 11th word in this episode, inshallah. The 11th word, as we mentioned several times, is a paradigm changer. It helps us to see reality as reality is. It gives us a perspective. When we look with that perspective, we understand what the creation is about and how it points to the Creator. We read through a representational allegorical story at the beginning and then we have been discussing the realities that that story is pointing to. We talked about the duty of life and in this episode we will talk as much as possible about the quiddity of life, purpose of life, secret of the reality of life and how to attain felicity in life, inshallah. So, Bismillah. Ey gafil nefsim! Senin hayatının gayesini ve hayatının mahiyetini, hem hayatının suretini, hem hayatının sırrı hakikatini, hem hayatının kemal saadetini bir derece anlamak istersen bak. O oh my heedless lower soul! We know by now that Üstad Nursi addresses his lower soul. Whenever he writes these, he addresses his lower soul. And we too should listen to it as if it is addressed to our lower soul. Our heart, our intellect, our conscience may not be objecting to the realities that are uh, mentioned here. But the lower soul is also the evil commanding soul. And it always commands evil and it will raise objections. So we need to listen with the intention to convince our lower soul and bring it to truth. Oh, my heedless lower soul, if you want to understand to some degree the purpose of life, the quiddity of life, quiddity means what it is, what life is. It is a translation of the word mahiye, and mahiye literally means what is it. Ma is what, hiya is it, and the the verb is is implied. What is it? If you want to understand to some degree the purpose of life, the quiddity of life, the secret of the reality of life, and the perfect degree of felicity you can reach in life. Look. Senin hayatının gayelerinin icmali dokuz emirdir. The summary of the purposes of your life consists of nine matters. Here is that Nursi is going to list nine things that when put together gives us the ultimate purpose of life. Birincisi şudur ki senin vücudunda konulan duygular terazileriyle rahmet ilahiyenin hazinelerinde ittihar edilen nimetleri tartmaktır ve külli Şükretmektir. The first is this. With the scales of the senses put in your body, weighing the blessings stored in the treasuries of divine mercy and showing universal gratitude. So what does this mean? What are those scales that are put in our uh, body? First of all, we need to remember that this is about life 
and we are talking about a living body. We are not talking about an inanimate body like a rock, but we are talking about a living body, which means that it is interacting with the rest of creation to a more intense degree. And especially when it is for the human being, the degree of intensity increases tremendously. But the first degree of that interaction is the interaction of the physical body. The senses put in our body, such as touch, taste, smell, hearing, seeing, right? These are the senses, and there may be other senses too. Uh, these enable us to sample blessings that are placed all over the creation. We taste a, a let's say, a peach, and it tastes delicious. Our sense enables us to interact with the peach in a way that it gives us pleasure and delight. So with the scales of the senses put in your body, weighing the blessings, measuring, sensing, the blessings stored in the treasuries of divine mercy, treasuries of divine mercy, everything around us, everything that contains things that gives us pleasure that gives uh, that give us pleasure that give us sustenance that give us comfort they are all treasuries of divine mercy because we are infinitely needy and in the physical realm from the point of view of our physical existence we are needy too we need air we need water we need food we need sleep we need to uh, discard toxic material from our body and so on and so forth all of these needs are met on a daily basis every day we wake up having slept we inshallah find something to eat we nourish our bodies right we see beautiful things we need the beauty we look around and we see beauty for those who know how to see it, beauty is everywhere, right? We use these senses in order to interact with and in a sense consume or partake in those blessings and that gives us a pleasure and that pleasure calls for what? Gratitude, that comfort, that sustenance, the meeting of the needs calls for gratitude. So we weigh the blessings stored in the treasuries of divine mercy and in return show universal gratitude. In that case, this weighing, this measurement and the gratitude that that measurement entails are among the purposes of life. İkincisi, senin fıtratında vaaz edilen cihazatın anahtarlarıyla esma-i kudsiye ilahiyenin gizli definelerini açmaktır. Zat-ı aktesi o esma ile tanımaktır. Second, with the keys of the equipment placed in your innate nature, opening the hidden buried treasures of the divine sacred names and knowing the most sacred entity through those names. Now in the first uh, purpose we talked about the physical aspect of our interaction with the rest of creation here we are uh, raising the bar a little bit and we are talking about some other kind of equipment placed in our innate nature innate nature is fitra how we are born we are all born with a pure nature that is in perfect alignment with the purpose of our creation and and with our lord however over time that that pure innate nature becomes corrupted however many equipments are placed in that innate nature that enable us or that should enable us to witness to uh, comprehend the manifestations of divine names or the divine names themselves divine names and attributes we cannot know our lord we cannot comprehend our lord in his entity as he is but he put the duty of knowing him on our shoulders and out of his mercy he gave us ways to know him and the foremost among those 
ways to know him is the manifestation of his names and attributes in the creation so through the creation we look and through the creation we know his divine names his divine names are hidden buried treasures everywhere with the right perspective remember we, we said this 11 three t's is about acquiring attaining the, the the right perspective in order to see reality as reality is from the right point of view from the right angle when we look from the right angle we see those hidden buried treasures of the sacred divine names everywhere in the creation because the ability to see them are placed as equipment in our innate nature we already talked a little bit about this for instance we have a sense of ownership where did that sense of ownership come from what is it it is very difficult impossible to pinpoint it to to uh, show it hear it see it to put it in some material form that you can point to it's a construct but that construct is in our innate nature it is given to us it is there and we know that it is there and because it is there we now can understand God's ownership of the dominion when we recite Al-Fatiha the, the first chapter of the Quran and we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm din the owner of the day of religion the day of judgment so what does that mean if we did not have any sense of ownership we would not be able to understand what that means but God put placed in our innate nature the, the sense of ownership among the equipment that he placed there for us to understand his divine names the a sense of beauty when we see something beautiful we recognize as something beautiful but what is it again it's not a material object that you can see touch feel it is something in there it is a sense right it is an inner sense it is a sense of the inner sight it is placed there um, fear so why do we fear plants as far as we know don't have that sense of fear but human beings have the sense of fear so why is it there well we need to fear our Lord the way he deserves to be feared he is the overpowering right he is tremendous he is majestic um, love love our Lord is to be loved he is beautiful he is perfect he is the uh, source of loving source of love and we want to interact with him in that respect too but but how would we love him if we were not given that that notion of love right so all of these and we can increase the number probably infinitely all of these equipment are given to us in order to recognize divine names sacred divine names which are hidden buried treasures spread all around the creation and thereby to know the most sacred entity through those names so we know his entity through his his names we we don't know his entity through his entity that's beyond our reach we are created he is the creator we are in different dimensions it is like trying to explain the third dimension height to a dot that lives on a two-dimensional piece of paper it's not possible we cannot figure that out Üçüncüsü, şu teşrigah dünyada mahlukat nazarında esma-i ilahiyenin sana taktıkları garip sanatlarını ve latif cilvelerini bilerek hayatınla teşhir ve izah etmektir. Third, recognizing the marvelous arts and subtle instances of reflection that the divine names have attached to you and displaying and exposing them in this display house of the world and before the sights of creatures now up to this point it was about 
uh, us looking out sensing feeling recognizing things outside of our existence our uh, entity and interacting with them and recognizing god's signs of creation in them and using that to interact with our lord either uh, by witnessing and taking partaking uh, in his mercy and showing gratitude in return or by recognizing through those equipment placed in our innate nature and uh, understanding his divine names and through that recognizing his divine entity now the the purpose switched to an inside out uh, direction recognizing the marvelous arts and subtle instances of reflection that the divine names have attached to you now we turn from the horizons from the outside world to inside to ourselves and we recognize their marvelous arts and and subtle instances of reflection that the divine names have attached to you so these marvelous arts and and these uh, subtleties are reflections of the divine names and therefore when we look at ourselves the way we recognize in the creation we recognize in ourselves those divine names how so we can start from the the easiest right look at your fingertips how purposeful they are and how beautiful they are and how distinct and peculiar they are no fingertip is the same as another but all fingertips have the same function of being able to you know, grab things sense things feel things move things it is so versatile isn't this beautiful when you contemplate on this don't you see that this is created by someone who sees you who knows you who, who knows the purposes that you are created for and you your needs how, how like uh, may god protect us uh, from such afflictions and may god give patience to those who are afflicted with it but if somebody were to lose his or her fingers or hand how difficult would life would become now that is a lesson for us to to see the blessing in us having our fingers and recognizing their versatility the wisdom that's placed in them how many different purposes do they serve how much wisdom is put in that our eyes our sight right all of these are things that are placed in us as marvelous arts and then the subtle instances of reflection of the divine names and and this is uh, more spiritual or at, at least that's my understanding of uh, what Ustad Nusi has uh, written here this is about more spiritual more refined uh, aspects of our existence and our experience there are moments when we are filled with joy where is that coming from there are times when we are constricted where that is coming from there are times when we find peace where is that coming from when we are satiated physically but the the the, uh, the metaphysical dimension of that satiation because there are people who may be filled but they are not satiated the sense of contentment where are all these senses all these feelings all these emotions coming from they are coming from where the divine names recognizing the marvelous arts and subtle instances of reflection that the divine names have attached to you okay so this is one side of the third purpose the other side is now you looked out you saw beauty on the rose flower or the myrtle tree you looked out and you saw beauty on the firmament on a clear night everything in the creation is fulfilling an aspect of the purpose of their creation by demonstrating that beauty by demonstrating the manifestations of divine names on them well if those divine names are manifest on you then you also have a duty to show them and that is another purpose of your life so by 
recognizing them and then exposing them exposing those marvelous arts and subtle instances of reflection that the divine names have attached to you in this display house of the world so that's a definition of the world right that the, the world is lowly etc etc but from this point of view it is lofty because it is the display house of the divine manifestations of the divine names how can it be you know lovely if it is displaying the manifestations of divine names right in this display house of the world and before the sights of creatures so this is a reciprocal thing it is not only that the tree displays its its uh the manifestations on it to us but also we display the manifestations on us to the tree how well there are angels that are appointed to every creature and perhaps that that angel that's appointed to the tree that i'm looking at right now uh, is looking at me and seeing me talk and you know read these beautiful words etc but in another sense i am blessed with being the wise regent of god on this surface of the earth one of the manifestations of that is that when i plant a flower i give it water so by giving water to the plant i'm manifesting god's name the provider so the way i take care of the creation the way i take care of this world this environment or the way i interact with other human beings or animals or things these all have the meaning of me manifesting god's divine names and attributes in that case i want to be able to manifest them in the best way possible because that is a responsibility it is the it is one of the purposes of my life and also a responsibility in that case i have to feel and act responsibly in my interaction with the creation Dördüncüsü. Lisan hal ve kalinle Halikun'un dergah rububiyetine ubudiyetini ilan etmektir. Now we talked about us witnessing the creation, us witnessing the manifestations of divine names in the creation, us manifesting the reflections of those divine names to the creation, to ourselves and to the creation. Now we raise the bar a bit more. We are we are going to say fourth proclaiming your worshipful slavehood with the tongues of your states and actions to your creator's court of lordship now presenting it to to god in his court of lordship before before him as our lord proclaiming what our worshipful slavehood worshipful slavehood that is the position that a slave of god is supposed to take before his lord by recognizing our neediness by recognizing our impotence what is the secret of that now first of all we are infinitely impotent and uh, and and weak and needy that is the fact and as a result of that all the blessings that we enjoy all the sustenance that we uh, use in order to stay uh, in life all of that are manifestations of God's divine names and attributes all of that is an interaction with our Lord right so everybody does this grass on the on the ground does it the tree does it the star does it the sun does it the cloud does it the molecules do it uh, the the elephant does it the snake does it the cow does it the human beings do it whether they believe or not whether they are believers or not all human beings do this because living is manifesting living is being the locus of appearance of god's divine names and and attributes and all human beings who live are doing this but the important thing is that that is not sufficient to fulfill the purpose of life for human beings because human beings are also given consciousness and choice partial human will partial choice for the human being to fulfill the purpose of his life as different from the animal or plant or the inanimate being they need to become aware of that 
that manifestation and proclaim it, thus becoming worshipful slaves of their Lord. The more I recognize my infinite impotence and neediness, I recognize, to that extent, I recognize God's infinite power and infinite blessings, the, His infinite mercy. And that recognition is the secret of worshipful slavehood. And through that recognition, I move on to proclamation, proclaiming your worshipful slavehood with the tongues of your states and actions to your creator's court of lordship. What are those states and actions? Well, I get hungry. Everybody, every living human being gets hungry. That is a state. But if I am aware that this state is a sign of my neediness to God and therefore I treat it as such. When I'm hungry, I take this position of worshipful slave before God, expecting my sustenance from Him. That expectation is the state that is the proclamation. I eat uh, we started with a peach let's continue with it i eat a peach it is tasteful delicious juicy it gives me delight that is a state but if i recognize the pleasure that that state is giving to me and i take the position of a worshipful slave and show gratitude to my lord that state of gratefulness is also a state and serves the purpose of my life and actions start from the the epitome of uh, worship praying performing the daily prayers go to fasting performing the hajj giving zakat taking the testimony of faith or giving charity helping a weak creature that is in in a state of difficulty and uh, the other day i watched this uh, video i think it was in kazakhstan some brothers men uh, help a dog out of a water canal the the dog seems to have fallen there it's a concrete canal and it's not able to get out uh, one of the young men go down to the, the the bottom where the water is flowing and tries to like get to the dog and holds the dog but then it is a slope a steep concrete slope he cannot go up so <laughs> people passing by see this and two other young men uh, one of them hold on to the the, the fence by the canal and uh, the other one holds his hand and they try to like form a human chain but they cannot reach all the way down so they keep struggling and struggling and eventually one more man comes so you have a, a human chain of three young men and eventually they reach the fourth who is now holding the dog and they pull <laughs> one another and eventually the dog is saved right it is a you know a moment of compassion and mercy that is visually available out there so that's an action that's an action that manifests our uh, worshipful slavehood if this is done with the intention to help one of god's creatures and uh, because it's god's god's creature right there could be other intentions and of course intentions can make or break our acts into uh, worship or sin we can receive rewards or sin for the same action so intention is the the life the spirit the qualifier the coefficient of actions or watering that plant that we talked before right so all sorts of things that we do in our life with the right intention it turns into a an act of worship and therefore it helps us proclaim our worshipful slavehood with the tongues of our states and actions and that's another purpose of life beşincisi nasıl bir asker padişahından aldığı türlü türlü nişanları resmi vakitlerde takıp padişahın nazarında görünmekle onun iltifatatı asarını gösterdiği gibi sen dahi esma ilahiyenin cilvelerinin sana verdikleri letaif insaniye murassaatıyla bilerek süslenip o şahid ezelinin nazara şuhud ve eşadına görünmektir. Fifth. 
we talked about so i'm i'm providing these summaries too so that we can uh keep in in mind we talked about the physical senses and how we recognize the blessings in the in the uh, creation and show gratitude for it and then the more subtle senses that are placed in our innate nature that help us to recognize and understand uh, the divine names and that's an aspect of perception too and then the third we perceive uh the the marvelous arts and recognize perceive and recognize the marvelous arts and subtle instances of reflection of divine names that are attached to to us but also now displaying them and fourth proclaiming our worshipful slavehood with the tongues of our states and actions to uh, the creator's court of lordship again this is not only perception but this is now proclamation so we sensed recognized perceived and displayed then proclaimed now we are raising the bar still a bit more and uh, we are still before our lord and we are now going to show him his imprints fifth in the way that a soldier shows the imprints of the favors of his king by wearing the various decorations that he has received from the king and appearing before his sight on ceremonial occasions for you, it is appearing before the witnessing sight of the eternal witness as he holds others witness by beautifying yourself consciously with the adornments of the human subtleties that the instances of reflection from the divine names have given to you. Here we are moving into uh, the realm of acts of worship. Now, worshipful slavehood is a state and we are in that state whether we recognize it or not constantly but acts of worship are consciously intended to be acts of worship if one can turn his entire life into an act of worship perfect but there are uh, specifically designated acts of worship that are there for us uh, for us to perform and that are there to train us to becoming worshipful slaves so these are ceremonial occasions the perfect example again is the performance of daily prayers in the way that a soldier shows the imprints of the favors of his king by wearing the various decorations that he has received from the king well, imagine a ceremony the uh, the anniversary of the enthronement of the king there is a ceremony that's being held right the soldier is going to wear the best clothes the cleanest best clothes put all the decorations on and all the maybe they did all the arms weapons etc and go before his king and appear there before the king's sight why to show what the king has favored the soldier with not the show to show to boast of this or that that the soldier has because i mean in this context if there is a king of course we are thinking that the king owns everything in the domain and everything that the soldier has it also belongs to the king the soldier does not own anything by himself he is a member of the army and everything is given to him if he were to he were to lose his rank or membership in the army all of those decorations would be taken away from him right so in the way that a soldier shows those decorations in those ceremonial occasions for us what how does this relate to us it is appearing before the witnessing sight of the eternal witness god is the eternal witness as he holds others to others witness too so it is before god and before god's creation by beautifying yourself consciously now to understand this i like to think about the prophet وسلم, because he was the noblest of creation he was the best of creation he was the most beautiful of creation and god in a sense boasts with him before creation now we can see this in the in the story of adam السلام, when, when god presents adam السلام, to the angels and the angels are somewhat like perplexed like why what, what is this happening they are not objecting but they are perplexed and god then teaches adam السلام, the names and asks the angels to name things and they cannot then ask adam and adam السلام, names things so god turns to the angels and says you know, Did, didn't i tell you that i know that what you don't know right so god is now boasting uh to to the angels uh, 
uh, about Adam alayhi salam. So if that is the case, what about the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation? That is what we want to aim for. We want God to be proud with us to boast to his angels about us. Like when in the famous hadith, right? The, when, when believers gather to remember God and angels who are looking for the, the lives of those gatherings of remembrance, I gather above that, that, that gathering of human beings and form a uh, form lines all the way to the arch, the, the, the throne and tell God, Oh God, these people are, uh, you know, remembering you, etc. Right, so imagine they, uh, of course, when we use the word boasting or pride, etc., we are using uh, our human notions in order to talk about God, and we have to do this with the caveat that as becomes his sanctity, right? God is boasting as becomes his sanctity with his slaves, with his creation. So for us human beings, we are created in the best of forms. Therefore, we want to adorn ourselves with the best of the best of forms. Because when we corrupt that form, it can also fall into lowest of the law. We want to stay on the highest of the high by adorning ourselves with good character. With good character. With uh, acts of worship. With acts of charity. Right? appearing before the witnessing sight of the eternal witness as he holds others witness by beautifying yourself consciously knowingly with the adornments of the human subtleties praising your lord loving your lord compassion love sincerity courage right modesty all the good character traits trying to to adorn ourselves with those and the instances of reflection from the divine names so those are those beautiful things that that then become manifest on us are again reflections of the divine names nothing is from us and we do not know them as from us right these are reflections of the divine names and when we acquire those good character traits then we manifest them we reflect them in the best possible way and then god as the eternal witness sees us in that state and also shows us to his creation altıncısı zevil hayat olanların tezahürat-ı hayatiye denilen Halıklarına tahiyyatları ve rumuzat-ı hayatiye denilen sanilerine tesbihatları ve semerat ve gayat-ı hayatiye denilen vahibül hayata arz-ı ubudiyetlerini bilerek müşahede etmek, tefekkürle görüp şehadetle göstermektir. Now, we reach this state of uh, worship, this level of worship, then we turn around and recognize that it is not us only who is worshiping. Sixth, consciously observing the living being's salutations which are called the appearances of life. So this is Stad Nursi calling it, right? Appearances of life. What does that mean? Uh, a tomato plant. It was a seed. You threw it in the soil and then it, it, I mean, nothing was happening for a while. And all of a sudden something, something starts to come out of the soil, pushing little you know, pieces of earth to the side. It is shooting and then it's growing and then it's flowering. And then there, these red balls that we now call tomatoes are starting to appear there, right? Or uh, you see a a cow that sees a an herb that it really likes and goes toward that herb. You can see, like you can sense this this this joyful movement toward the herb, and it starts to to bite it and chew it, and there is a probably a taste that comes to its tongue and it is enjoying it and you can sense in the in the vigor and nature of the actions of this cow that it is enjoying itself and in that enjoyment in that enjoyment is a salutation to god in the growth of the tomato plant in the vigor with which it grows there is a salutation to god the giver of life the sustainer the merciful 
right there that that vigor that we observe is a salutation that appears on living creatures consciously observing the living beings salutations which are called appearances of life various states various forms various appearances that living objects take throughout their lives are salutations their glorifications of their artful maker which are called the subtle indications of life right? subtle indications of life things that differentiate that these living creatures from inanimate objects like a rock that doesn't move and therefore interact with the rest of the world but think of a bee right? a tiny bee interacts with the entire mountain and all the plants on the mountain and then flies to the riverside and drinks its water from there and goes back to the hive and interacts with other bees right a tiny bee with life it is now interacting with everything around it and there are there are instances meanings that emerge from that that do not emerge from the existence of the inanimate rock and the presentations of their worship was therefore to the giver of life so if human beings are given this this this um notion of recognizing god and and giving their their salutations and presenting their worshipful slavehood to god right that is a notion that we now have that is built in our innate nature and we see and by once we recognize that we turn around and in that vigor in that joyful motion in the realm that we observe on uh, living living beings and there are living beings everywhere it's the, the entire existence is filled with living conscious beings angels uh, we in that we we see that they too must be presenting their worshipful slavehood to their lord so the tree is presenting its worshipful slavehood to its lord we see its appearances we see some subtle indications of that then we know that the appointed angel the, an the angel that's appointed to represent this tree is also consciously presenting the worshipful slavehood of the tree to its lord and I have the ability to perceive all of this and when I present my worshipful slavehood to my Lord I do so with the intention of a universal worship with the intention of presenting the salutations and presentations and indications of everything that is in the creation seeing them seeing all of this right so the appearances you can see with your eyes but those indications you need to move a bit further and and start to contemplate about it seeing them with contemplation and showing them by witnessing showing them by witnessing i become a witness to this and i turn around and say look look something is going on here everybody come and look we need to celebrate this we need to celebrate this creation by being good witnesses by being insightful and uh, grateful witnesses to it yedincisi senin hayatına verilen cüz'i ilim ve kudret ve irade gibi sıfat ve hallerinden küçük numunelerini vahide kıyasi ittihaz ile halika zülcelal'in sıfat-ı mutlakasını ve şuun-ı mukaddesesini o ölçülerle bilmektir Mesela sen cüz'i iktidarın ve cüz'i ilmin ve cüz'i iradenle bu haneyi muntazam yaptığından şu kasr-ı alemin senin hanenden büyüklüğü derecesinde şu alemin ustasını o nisbette kadir, alim, hakim, müdebbir bilmek lazımdır. 7. By considering the small samples of the properties and states that are given to your life, such as partial knowledge, power, will of course partial knowledge partial power partial will each by knowing them each a unit of measurement and thus with their measures knowing the absolute attributes and sacred conducts of the majestic creator now we talked about uh, the the um subtle subtleties placed are 
in our innate nature and using them to know our Lord here we are raising the bar a little bit and moving beyond just knowing that that notion that name uh, belongs to God to trying to develop a sense of we cannot comprehend this but to develop a sense of the magnitude the majesty the tremendousness of the, the absoluteness of those attributes as they belong to God how so we know we sense that we have let's say some knowledge some power some will we think that these are given to us as we mentioned so that we recognize our Lord we use them as a unit of measurement so what do we mean by unit of measurement it is important to establish first that we cannot measure the tremendous of our Lord we cannot measure the absoluteness of our Lord because absoluteness cannot be measured absoluteness is, is what it implies it's absolute there is no end to it and you cannot measure a thing that that has no end these manifest these reflect right these reflect the the the, the entity that is the source of the reflection but we cannot use the reflection in order to measure him right but we can still use what we have as a unit of measurement to develop a sense of its tremendousness and magnitude so it is important to understand this distinction we are not measuring we are developing a sense of measurement we are de developing a sense of magnitude for example since you made this house in an orderly fashion with your partial power uh, partial knowledge and partial will knowing the master maker of this realm to be all powerful all knowing all wise and the administrator to the extent of the greatness of this palace of the realm in comparison with your house you know i made a house let's assume that i made a house you know i took some wood some stones some mud some cement some this some that and i worked for you know five six months a year and i'm doing this all in my by myself by the way i i build a little hut how much effort did it take me how much knowledge i had to have in order to build it because i had to know how you know things relate to one another i had to have a sense of how gravity works i had to have a sense of how you know mater matter material objects work um i had to make choices and relate things to one another right so if i did not do any of this i would not have any way to understand my lord's power will and knowledge because i would not have those notions so i have those notions but i have them as notions i don't have the reality of them they are reflections of what he has once i know them as reflections of what he has then i can compare my little hut to the cosmos that we now based on what we can know think of as being as wide as how far light can travel in 14 billion years which is i mean mind-boggling right but that's not that's not the end of it so important thing is that is not the end of it this is there and useful to instill a sense of oh in us and recognize his majesty and take a position therefore before him in recognition of his majesty by considering the small samples of the properties and states that are given to your life such as partial knowledge power and will each a unit of measurement and thus with their measures knowing the absolute attributes and sacred conducts of the majestic creator if i never so and perceived something with length let's say a an inch of a thread then i would never be able to comprehend what length is i saw an inch of a thread i look at it and i perceive the the property that it extends from one point to another point as length now 
that I have the concept of length in my mind, I can understand how high Mount Everest is because somebody tells me you put you know, so many of these inches together and that is the height of Mount Everest. I have a unit of measurement. However, I understand that this is just a metaphorical uh, aid for me to comprehend when it comes to God. This is just a metaphorical aid for me to comprehend that God is tremendous because I cannot measure God in terms of length. He is not, he is not like any of his creatures. He is unlike anything that is in the creation, right? But there is a, there is a dilemma there. I have to know him. How am I going to know him if he is unlike anything in the creation? So one answer that um, scholars and Gnostics have given to this is that you, you know him by him making himself known to you without, uh, without the, the intervention of the intellect which measures things through your heart. Fine. But knowing him is a duty, a responsibility on each and every human being and that's not happening to each and every human being so and also god tells us in the quran don't you use your intellect right so we have to weigh a, we have to have a way of knowing him by using our intellect right and that happens by us understanding that all of these notions all of these uh, samples and properties that are placed in our uh, quiddity in our existence in our sense of uh, human eyeness right in our spirit in our heart all of these are placed there for us to know him right but ultimately we also need to to envelop that knowledge with the the ultimate knowledge that wherever our knowledge reaches he is beyond it this is for us to this is to help us to take the the worshipful slavehood position that we are supposed to be taking before him if we do not recognize his beauty we cannot love him if you do not recognize his majesty we cannot be filled with a sense of of all of him if we do not recognize his perfection we cannot lose ourselves before his perfection we cannot we cannot uh, worship him right we cannot worship him the way he deserves to be worshipped we cannot know him the way he deserves to be known however that does not mean that we cannot know him at all at all we cannot worship him at all we can have the intention to worship him as he deserves we can say oh god i intend to worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped although i'm failing to do so please accept it from me out of your mercy and your outpouring love and affluence i am poor you are you are affluent sekizincisi şu alemdeki mevcudatın her biri kendine mahsus bir dille Halık'ın vahdaniyetine ve saniyenin rububiyet, rububiyetine dair manevi sözlerini fehmetmektir Eighth, comprehending the metaphysical words of the existent beings of this realm, each according to its peculiar language about the essential oneness of its creator and the lordship of is its artful maker. Complete rejection of association, complete rejection of polytheism, making one. Because, you know, we have been recognizing all these reflections, manifestations, etc., but we should not think it should not come to our thought that this might have multiple sources because when we again look from the right angle with the correct perspective we see that everything is saying he is one he is one he is the greatest there is none other than him he is the creator he is the sustainer he is the the the mercy giver he is the one to him return is now this is a small sentence and we are not going to go into detail but Ustad Nursi talks about this a lot uh, in, in other treatises. The 33rd word provides us 33 windows into his uh, oneness and existence and oneness. Uh, the 
treaty is called Qatra, uh, the drops, provides us 55 ways in which the creatures in the creation say God is one. Right? 55 tongues, he calls it there. We cannot go into detail of it here, but the important thing here is to understand that creatures, everything in the creation, speak and say he is one. And it is on to us to try to see, hear what they are saying, to try to comprehend what they are saying. Dokuzuncusu, aciz ve zaafın, fakr ve ihtiyacın ölçüsüyle kudret-i ilahiye ve gınay-i rabbaniyenin derecat-ı tecelliyatını anlamaktır. Nasıl ki aç, açlığın dereceleri nispetinde ve ihtiyacın envaı miktarınca taamın lezzeti ve derecatı ve çeşitleri anlaşılır, onun gibi sen de nihayetsiz aczin ve fakrınla nihayetsiz kudret ve gınay-i ilahiyenin derecatını fehmetmelisin. İşte senin hayatının gayeleri icmalen bunlar gibi emirlerdir. Nice. This is the last one. Understanding the degrees of manifestation of divine power and lordly affluence with the measures of your impotence and weakness, poverty and needs, in the way that the taste, levels and varieties of food are understood proportionately to the degrees of hunger and the quantity of the varieties of needs, likewise, you should comprehend the degrees of infinite power and divine affluence with your infinite impotence and poverty. Now, we already talked about recognizing, right? The, the uh, first purpose, for instance, was recognizing the blessings stored in the treasuries of divine mercy with the senses put in our body, right? This is also similar. We are doing the same thing. We are using the the the scales the measures that are put in our body or in our uh, innate nature in our existence to to measure right but here what what's happening is we are going to its degrees the degrees of manifestation the variety of manifestation we, we are starting to see them all together we are starting to see the whole colossal existence as a manifestation of divine power and lordly affluence that we are in need of, that we are in interaction with, with everything. Understanding the degrees of manifestation of divine power and lordly affluence, so divine power, the, everything is, everything in existence is in existence because God's power acted upon it. Lordly affluence, we need everything in the creation and we are provided with everything we need we are infinitely needy and he is infinitely affluent whatever we need and again we can need everything he is able to give that to us with the measures of your impotence and weakness so this is the measure if we understand our infinite weakness infinite impotence infinite poverty and infinite needs or neediness then that gives us a pathway to understanding the infiniteness of his power his affluence his sustenance we cannot do it just by looking around and counting the number of creatures in the creation we cannot know the the tremendousness of his power by counting the number of stars in the in the in the in the universe yes we can have a sense of it and we can be filled with awe but it's infinite and the number of stars is finite however our impotence is infinite our weakness is infinite our poverty and needs are infinite because we can turn everything that we can imagine or think of into a need so there's no end to it when we, when we say infinite, but what we mean is there is no end to it. There is no uh, fin, right? Fin is an end. There is no end to it. Otherwise, we are not talking about some kind of a number that, that is you know, infinite. Because uh, that's, an, that's an impossibility. That's, that, is, that is just a notion. Infinite is not a number. It is a notion. 
right so we can reach that notion and therefore have an understanding of the infiniteness infinitude of his power his knowledge his mercy his creation his absoluteness in all respects his beauty and majesty and perfection from this inner out in the way that the taste the levels and varieties of food are understood proportionately to the degrees of hunger and the quantity of the varieties of needs if i need a fork i can appreciate the the, the existence of a fork if i need if i need a, a pencil i can appreciate the existence of a pencil but the illiterate person the shepherd who was born at you know some mountain uh, height never saw a written word never even imagined it never appeared to him that somebody could write something or be somebody who lived before the invention of writing right for someone who lived before the invention of writing the pe a pencil was not a need my grandfather never saw a computer let alone a cell phone he lived 67 years and for 67 years he never felt the need for a cell phone yet many of many of us today cannot live without one it is con it is almost considered an essential need now why because we use it to communicate with people many of us use it for business to do shopping uh to to procure various kinds of needs for entertainment too but you know that is one aspect of it another aspect is it is it is there's a lot of business that goes into it and therefore for some it is considered an essential need it was not for my grandfather so in the way that the taste levels and varieties of food are understood proportionately to the degrees of hunger right hunger is my need now that i have a need for a cell phone i can appreciate the existence of a cell phone and the quantity of the varieties of needs likewise you should comprehend the degrees of infinite power and divine affluence with your infinite impotence and poverty that that inner route is the is the way to comprehend the degrees of infinite power and divine affluence the varieties of blessings that he is showering us with so we need to to reflect upon our own impotence and neediness impotence and poverty that is a very powerful and also short and guaranteed way to reaching knowledge of our lord and uh, I, i'm not going to go into too much detail about this but this is one of the uh, important significant uh, novel and powerful aspects of Ustad Nursi's method the method that he has developed in the Risale -e Nur uh, with regard to a human being being with intellect getting to know his Lord so in summary the purposes of your life are matters like this so the continuation of this treatise inshallah we will need to leave uh, to the next episode and I am almost sure that inshallah we will be able to finish it in the next episode subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al alimul hakim wa akhir dawahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al fatiha